very good morning and assalamu alaikum to all my dear viewers and subscribers we have been learning history from some period of about 40 days and today our topic is gupta administration gupta administration in this video we will study taxes and currency also but what were the salient features or features of this administration will be discussed first let us see some of the features of this administration one by one unlike Mauryan administration Gupta rulers had direct control see unlike Mauryan administration First of all, we must know what is this Mauryan administration and the time and the time period. First of all, we know was from 298 BC when Chandragupta Maurya Chandragupta Maurya, its first ruler, founded this dynasty founded it it is last ruler that is Brihadrat or Brihadratha was killed in 155 BC by Pushya Mitra Shunga Pushya Mitra Shunga and founded this person the Shunga dynasty however it was not to mention here but sometimes I remind you such things so that you mean get it recalled unlike Morgan administration that is the administration which we just start talking of unlike that this Gupta administration had a unique type of administration that is they had direct control direct control on few provinces like provinces like that of Bengal Bihar Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and some parts of and some parts of Punjab. Before going further into details, let's first of all know what is the location or where is the location of these states I have just talked. Bengal see it is here Bihar this one is here Madhya Pradesh here Uttar Pradesh this one states may be bigger or lower I am just only mentioning the points and some parts of Punjab it is almost here they had a direct they had direct control over these states what was to the rest if they had that is in other parts which they controlled they ruled with the help of defeated kings see suppose we will take the case of Samudra Gupta Samudra Gupta was one of the greatest kings 
or to say the greatest king of this dynasty, he was also called as Napoleon of India. See, in case of Samudra Gupta, it is said, not only said, it is mentioned in that he defeated nine kings of North India, twelve kings of South India, and eighteen kings of Central India. But he gave the kingdoms back to all of them on some pro, um, on some features that is they had to apply that is the defeated king defeated king had to number one pay tribute pay tribute to the Samdra Gupta had to marry had to marry his daughter to Samudra Gupta had to come to the court himself the court of Samudra Gupta himself on birth anniversary on every birth anniversary of Samdhar Gupta so indirectly rest provinces were also controlled by these Gupta rulers in this first type where we saw the control which was direct on Bengal Bihar UP Madhya Pradesh and some parts of Punjab, where the king was there, he established direct or central administration there. Central administration was there, and the king or king or samrat was very supreme, was also called samrat during that time. He was very supreme and was supreme commander of army. The powers he had was supreme commander of army. Number two, highest court of appeal. Highest court of appeal. Or to say here, equivalent to president or chief justice of modern India. Chief administrator. Chief administrator. He also clamored the king here also clamored himself with the divine power clamored himself with the divine power that is powers which were given to him by some which had come to him through heavenly means not given by the public or people and even clamored himself as Vishnu on earth that is equivalent to God, Vishnu on earth. That is the Samrath or king used to claim Vishnu on earth. This was done. Why these things that is divine power or Vishnu claiming himself divine on earth? It was done only for the purpose to broaden influence to broaden influence on common people or masses on common people and the nobility and the nobility he had under his control so that they may obey him and the administration would be of very safety the king was assisted 
we are studying this time Gupta administration and its unique features. The king was assisted by a series of ministers appointed by king himself. The ministers were appointed appointed by the king or samrat himself who were personally answerable or responsible before the king that is responsible before the king individually and not collectively that is everyone was responsible for the duty he had to perform or he was given so there were different posts meant for different works or public welfare and that is why the number of ministers was very large. However, we, didn't, we do not need to go into the long list of that. However, there are some posts which were made hereditary. Some posts were some ministerial posts. Or we can say some important ministerial posts were made were made hereditary. Harrison was given more than one post. Such a profession or such professions were given to the intellectuals or those who were very loyal or royal as well and to the high class personals. Unlike Mauryans, we again see unlike Mauryans, the Gupta's bureaucracy was small. This was mainly because autonomous institutions or self-governing board, bodies had emerged by then. See, if it is Gupta area, it is the central administration where they used to rule some areas, but if they had control over other areas, say for example this, this here yeah, so on and so forth what they used to do that they appointed here different and separate heads or usually governors to rule this, that particular area and these different government or administrative units ruling the separate areas was later called as Bukti administration. The Guptas divided their area into these various provinces which were called as Bukti administration and was given by a, to a governor mostly from a royal family. The head or the governor was mostly from this royal family and even they were sometimes or usually relatives with one another. That they did not even use to fight them. This maintained the stability of the Gupta administration during that time. Land grants was given to military officials. Unlike those of Mauryans, 
Mauryans had one peculiarity or unique feature that is they used to give salary in cash while as Guptas here give land grants to military officials. We also have evidence of a female heading a province Prabhavati, Prabhavati here and Prabhavati Gupta was daughter of Chandra Gupta, daughter of Chandra Gupta second. She had ruled, she uh, ruled Saurashtra, Saurashtra province which was in Gujarat, the famous Sudarshan lake was there. I am here once again recalling you that Sura, in Saurashtra there was a famous lake which was called Sudarshan lake. The importance of that had been asked many a times. Hope you would have learned about the Gupta administration. We will go into the detail of taxes and currency of the Gupta administration in the coming video. Thank you for being with me.